Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of BRS TV. Now, testing your aquarium water is one of the best ways to keep tabs on the status of your aquarium's health. And today I'm going to go over some common mistakes made when testing your water at home. Topping the list is not testing often enough. Now I'll admit I'm guilty of this one, but to be consistently successful in the reefing hobby, removing the guesswork is crucial. We constantly hear that stability is the key to a healthy reef tank, so weekly or even more frequent testing helps us dial in on potential issues before they become major problems. Next on the list would be using expired or contaminated test kits. Reagents will degrade over time and using them can result in false readings. So always check the expiration date on the kit or components and be sure to store these test kits properly to ensure accurate results. Be sure to also always rinse out cuvettes and pipettes with RO water between uses. Any residual reagents in the tools can also cause errors in those test results. All right, my third mistake is not following the kit instructions. Now, this one's super easy to do, but skipping steps, rushing through time steps, not mixing the reagents enough, miscounting titration drops, or even just shaking the vial incorrectly can lead to inconsistent results. So always follow the manufacturer's instructions exactly. Next up is testing at inconsistent times of the day. Now our water chemistry can fluctuate throughout the day and in some small systems with no refugium, for instance, pH can even swing from the high sevens at night to the mid eights in a single day. So testing pH at different times of the day would result in inconsistent readings and potentially drive a hobbyist mad trying to fix that problem. So for the most reliable results, always test at the same time of the day. This is preferably before the lights turn on in the morning or after they've been on for several hours of the day. The next mistake is relying on a single test result. You know, a single outlier in a test doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. If a test produces an unexpected or surprising result, double check with the test and, if possible, with a different test kit. Either way, don't make any major changes without double checking those results. All right, another mistake is ignoring calibration of digital testers. Now, digital testers can be a game changer and are usually way easier to use, but Digital meters for pH, salinity, TDS, and even temperature probes, as well as other testers like the HANA checkers, must be regularly calibrated using the correct standard solutions. If neglected, these meters can drift over time and produce inaccurate readings. All right, the next mistake on our list is not cross-checking with another test method. Now, this heralds back to not relying on a single test result, but sometimes comparing a test result from a different test type or brand can be a good check just for your sanity. Maybe one of your reagents is bad or you just didn't read the results right. So if a parameter seems off, try a different test or take a water sample to your local fish store to verify your results. I personally like to couple my testing with titration style tests and the HANA checkers just to make sure I have that backup method. All right, that brings us to mistake number eight, which is misreading color charts. This one is super easy to do. We have probably all moved those cuvettes back and forth above that color chart, trying to decide which color it matches best. But color-based test kits can be subjective, so always read them in good lighting and against a nice white background. For better accuracy, I like to use natural light, but I also find that testing in the same place under the same lighting each time will usually yield more consistent results. That brings us to the next mistake, overcorrecting based on one test. Now this sounds a lot like one of the previous mistakes, but the difference here is that some hobbyists will take drastic measures based on a test result, which can usually do more harm than good. If you get something like a low alkalinity reading, do not immediately dose a large amount of buffer in order to correct that issue. Gradual adjustments over multiple days or even weeks are far safer than sudden swings, which can stress your aquarium inhabitants. And finally, our last mistake, neglecting less obvious parameters. Now, it's easy for us to focus on the big parameters, alkalinity, pH, nitrate, and phosphate, but ignoring other parameters can have serious consequences. Ignoring things like magnesium and salinity, and even certain trace elements can lead to instability. So balance all key parameters to maintain a thriving reef. All right, so that wraps up our list of some common mistakes made when testing your aquarium water. I hope this helps you avoid some of these mistakes and it keeps your reef happy and thriving.